Hello, wonderful people. How are you doing? Hope you're good. Hope uh, the day is going on well. Today, we're looking at debt recovery in Nigeria. This is the part one because this is a large topic and um, a lot of things need to be discussed and I would not want to rush it. So basically, one way or the other, people owe each other. <laughs> So individually, companies or individuals or, you know, people go to the banks to borrow money. Even in this uh, tech age, there are a lot of loan apps here and there where people, you know, within 10 minutes, you can um, fill some online forms and, you know, drop your BVN. And you get credited, you know. There are a lot of um, ways now people can go out to borrow money. Sometimes even your banks send you messages that you can, you know, assess loans as small as this amount and all of that. You know, as much as they, there is this invitation to borrow money, many people do not know that as much as they are welcoming you to borrow money, if you don't pay back, there is a problem. And many people, you know, they are quick to assess these loans without having in place modalities or ways they can, you know, pay back this money. A lot of people assess this loan without even having the means to pay back. And when there is the time to pay or, you know, pay back comes, they are running health and skelter, they are crime file, they are just, you know, find a way out of it. So when people give you money, when companies give you, you know, borrow money or when you borrow money from the bank or microfinance bank, uh, or this is a lending association of societies, you know, there is, there is, a, there is a, um, an obligation to pay back because you have signed a contract, whether some, some of, sometimes you don't even know what you're signing is a contract, you know, or, you know, some form of an agreement on the repayment, um, you know, schedule, the interest rate. Many people do not have time to go through all these hidden things or all this, sometimes it's not even hidden. You know, they're not, they don't have time to go through all this before they sign. They are all after the money and they don't even know the hidden uh, terms and conditions that comes with this uh, loan. So basically, for every time you borrow money from someone or somewhere, you know, have it in mind you should pay back. Because many people are cr chronic debtors. They don't just want to pay. They feel what can they do? and all of that. Now, um, the first part of this uh, discussion is I'm going to talk about the unconventional methods of recovery of debt, which we have seen over time. You know, is prevalent in in our is prevalent in our society. So uh, I'm going to discuss it and we'll look at it. So join me, join me in the conversation, and I know that you will enjoy it. Now. The first unconventional method of recovery of debt is um, threatening an actual publication of people's name in the newspaper, social media. Over time, we've seen people's name published on social media, uh, people, companies' names published in newspaper, online platforms. Uh, you will see sometimes text messages are being sent to you to say this person is a fraudster, this person is a scammer, this person lacks integrity, or this person is owing so 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 so. Got the so people use this method. It's an unconventional method. So people, companies, banks, microfinance banks, lending societies use this method all in a bid to affect or injure or damage the reputation and integrity of the debtor. So they feel people, uh, when people know that you're owing, there's this uneasiness, there's this uh, um, need for you, there's this um, feeling of... Uh, uh, of being ashamed, so it makes them those, those debtors to rush out and pay. So that is why many people have resorted to this unconventional method of threatening. They'll come to your house, threaten you, send people to you, you know, publish your name, send it across all your contacts to say this person is owing. And that way, sometimes it has worked, but it is not right. Uh, it's an unconventional method of recovery of debt. Even though it is what is obtainable now, a lot of people are using it. It doesn't make it right. Yeah. So if you're a lend, you're in a, you're a lender, a certified lender, or you run 
um, an organization that lends people money, this method is unconventional. Now, the use of debt collectors, there are people that are known as debt collectors. Some people even say they are certified debt collectors. They are used by, you know, to, you know, go intimidate people, harass people. They sometimes utilize the police. They sometimes utilize other security agencies. They sometimes utilize talks to carry out debt you know, collection. Sometimes they come to someone's house, seize their property, even without the order of court. They just do a holder. So a lot of people, a lot of organizations utilize this unconventional method of utilizing using debt collectors in recovering loans or debts, you know, they are being owed. Another form of an unconventional method um, used in this time to recover loans or debt is the realization of uh, security. Now, um, this particular one is not unconventional. Um, because if, for example, you have been asked to deposit, okay, to bring a collateral, it's it is the usual practice in financial institutions. So, okay, bring a collateral that is of value of the same value with the money you're collecting. Now, if you fail to pay, you know your collateral, you know is being you know sold or is sold off, so that they can recover their money. But you don't, you can't just sell off. That's one, one thing I want to talk about under this heading. Um, the issue of uh, you depositing a collateral is known, uh, is known. But many people go out now to sell these properties without resorting to the law, to the lay down procedures, lay down law on how to you know, foreclose and sell and all of that. So um, a lot of people now on their own by just take the property, sell it off in lieu of the debt they are being owed. So um, we have to be careful for those who borrow, be careful because these companies, these uh, organizations, they don't want to know, they just feel the end justifies the means. I want, we want to get our money back and they do all that is within their power to get the money back. Now, detention of debtors. This one is like the normal thing now. Detention of debtors. Someone would just write a petition, utilize the police, utilize the EFCC, or any other um, security outfit to come and arrest someone because of debt. You know, this is an unconventional method. You know, as much as the police, you know, can come in because there's a, there's a limit, there's a limitation, or there's an exception to say there's an exception where the debt is kind of criminalized. When prevention, someone issues a debt check, the police can come in to recover that debt. Yes, the police. I will talk more on this later in the discussion. Now, uh, I've talked about the realization of the security that's collateral, where the bank, you know. These days, though it's the practice, banks insist on perfection of the legal mortgage. You know, by the customer who wants the money, you know, upon default, then the court can now proceed to foreclose, you know, and to sell the mortgage. But there, is, there, there, are, there are procedures. Uh, I, I hope to do a video on these procedures that the bank or any credit facility or any uh, loan giving society or association can utilize. Or, or go through before disposing of a collateral. Now, it's also important to know that banks accept deposit of title documents in the way it creates now the legal equitable mortgage. Banks accept deposit of title documents as collateral when you collect loans. Many people have deposited their title documents to bank, banks or other uh, money lending um, outfits just to get money and they're not able to pay back and uh, rather than find a way around it to be plead for instrumental payment or waiver of interest and all of that they will rush to court for an injunction to prevent them from selling at the end of the day after wasting so much time you know you know delaying the day of evil the evil day will still come so uh, let's now look at you know, other methods that is being used, unconventional method, which 
the, the, the essence, the goal is the end justifies the means. They don't want to know how you feel, how they go about it. Just want their money back. Now, earlier I've talked about the use of police and the EFCC. You have to understand that there are a lot of pretrial cases that have held, where well, the court have held that police, they're not in, empowered to recover debts. It's not their duty. You know, it's not their duty. If you wanted to go look at duty of the police, look at Section 4 of the Police Act. Now, like in the case of MC Laren against Jennings, it's a 2003 Federation Weekly Law Report, Part 154, 528 at 537 to 538. Also look at the case of Arab Contractors, Nigerian Limited against uh, Gillian Oman. It's a 2013 all Federation Weekly Law Report, Part 63, 683, uh, you know, 1977 at 1990. Now, I want to read out the case of um, EFCC uh, against the Diamond Bank and two others. It's a 2018 Law Pavilion Electronic Law Report 44217, where the Supreme Court's, you know, health force. I want to read out something in that case. They said, um, it is important for me. And my Lord, who delivered the lead judgment wrote, it's important for me to pause and say that the powers confined on the EFCC to receive complaints and prevent and or fight the commission of um, financial crime in Nigeria, pursuant to Section 6B of the EFCC Act, you know, does not extend to the investigation or resolution of disputes arising or resulting from simple contracts or civil transactions or in this care, in this care, you know, said EFCC has inherent duty to scrutinize all complaints that it receives carefully, no matter how carefully drafted by the complaining party, and be bold enough to counsel such complaints to seek appropriate or legal means to resolve their disputes. EFCC is not a debt recovery agency and should not be refrained from being used. Uh, and should be refrained from being used as such. So we, we have seen situations where many people utilize the police, the EFCC, in recovering debt. That's not their primary duty. I thought that EFCC, you know, they, 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 they are, they are judicial in, encompasses economic crimes. It's, it's a big, it encompasses a lot. But uh, primarily, they are not, they are not agents to recover uh, debts. But the only caveat is where it is criminalized. You know, we issue the proceeds of a crime. Maybe this, for example, you know, this internet for stars and all of that and all of that. You know, now um, don't forget I said when the crime is criminalized. Example, the issuance of dot check. You know, in the times of EFCC, maybe uh, where the debt involves maybe economic crime. They can interfere, but should not be stand as a an agent that will be recovering money for the for the person or for the company or for the institution that is being owed. You must understand also that under the end justifies the means approach, which breeds unconventional methods in recovering of debts. There is this psychological method that is being used in recovering debts. Uh, we call it the woman psychological approach, where women, a lot of microfinance uh, finance banks use this, and other uh, lending um, societies, where they use women as the debt collectors. You know, the, the, these women go around, you know, meet their debtors, talk to them. You know, so there's this the feel that when the women go as out as these debt collectors, they they are going to, especially if the debtor is a man. The, the ego of the man will, will you know will, will be affected when a woman keeps coming to you to say you're owing when are you going to pay so it's more of a psychological thing you know where women are used so, so that, that's the idea behind the woman's psychological method or approach now it is not also in doubt that mystical or diabolical means are used these days in, in recovering deaths no it is not it is unknown to law but it happens so I advise people who are owing to try and pay your debt. Try and pay your debt. Find a way to restructure it. Because sometimes when you feel they can't do something, they can do something too. 
So rather than run away from your debt, find a way to restructure and don't borrow when you don't have to, what to use to pay back. Many people just borrow for needs that they can meet with, really without borrowing. Many people just borrow and just for the sake of a want rather than a need. And at the end of the day, they don't have what it takes to pay back. Now let's look at the right of a guarantee. Most times, like financial institutions, they require you to, you know, get a guarantor who will fill the guarantor form for you to, you know, stand in for you. And many people do not understand what guarantor means, what the, you know, being a, what it means to stand as a guarantor. Many people feel that uh, they can pay it. Before you stand as a guarantor to someone, you have to be very careful. Very, very careful. Very, very careful. When you stand as a guarantor, when the person who is the debtor is not found, you automatically stands in the shoes of the person who is owing. And as such, you can be, they can arrest you and you can be made to pay back the loan the person took. Because they are no longer seeing the debtor. They are seeing you who stood in as the guarantor. Now, but as a guarantor, even after the guarantor has paid, for example, for example the guarantor has paid back the loan, the guarantor has a right to sue the debtor for the repayment of the money he has paid. He has a valid cause of action for the repayment of all sums of money that have been paid on behalf of the debtor. If I look at the case of Ade Oshun against the Business, the 2001 11 Nigeria Weekly Law Report at 724. So we've looked up on uh, we've looked on the unconventional methods, many financial institutions, lending um, societies and lending uh, ventures and enterprises use in recovering debt in Nigeria, with the peculiarities in Nigeria. Though a lot of things like similar to this happens outside the uh, 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 jurisdiction, outside the country. So um, many people have condemned the use of unconventional methods uh, in recovering loans, recovering debts. But you, you see that I told you that the rationale that is driving this unconventional method is the end justify the means approach or the end justifies the means uh, mantra for them, which says the end is to get our money back. The method by which we use to recover this money is not a business. That's not the right way. So um, this, this part one of this lecture focuses on this, this, this uh, teaching you, explaining to you this unconventional method, which it's not the law has not uh, the law is against them and it's not encouraging it. So, and the part two of this the discussion, we're going to look at ways, the legal ways, proper ways you can use the court system to recover debts owed to you. It's important to know that uh, even in as much as you're a debtor, it doesn't mean your life has ended. Uh, a reasonable person, a responsible person finds a way around uh, to get out of trouble rather than to delay the evil day. And many people, once they are, you know, there's an issue, they run to court to, you know, file an injunction and all of that. Rather than find a way to, you know, cushion the effect of the rising interest rates and find a way to restructure the loan and find a way to pay. Don't collect loan when you don't you don't even know. Some, some people don't even see the terms and conditions. They just collect. They just need the money. And when they can't pay back, they start run. I didn't sign or I signed. I didn't read all those excuses. You know, ignorance of the of the law is not an excuse. Check what you're signing. Can you can you fit in into the terms and condition? Can you pay back within time? You know, these are things you must look out for before you take a loan. And if you have taken a loan. Find a way around it to pay. So, watch out for the next video, um, part, second part of this lecture, where we're going to look at the right way, the legal proper way to recover low, um, debts in Nigeria, to recover loan or recover whatever money that is being owed to you or to someone else. If you've not subscribed to this channel, please hit the subscribe button and like our video, turn on the notification bell so whenever I drop a new video, you will be notified. Thank you for always tuning in. Thank you, my subscribers. It's been amazing. And for those who have not yet subscribed, I say thank you for stopping by to see what is new on this channel. 
do take care of yourself and stay out of this. <laughs> take care.